welcome to the program and I know the festive mood is here with us. Today's show has a festive touch coming to you from two islands worlds apart. One is Jazzy Island that is part of the UK and the other one is Zanzibar that is part of Tanzania and this is what we've lined up for you. We really have a very good reputation here. How Kenyans have taken Jersey Island's hospitality industry by storm. There are several hotels here in town. Every department is represented by a Kenyan, from the receptionist all the way to the chef, housekeeping, restaurant. Also on the show, our daring experience in Zanzibar, a safari link spreads its wings to the island. Zanzibar is extremely popular around the world. We have a lot of uh, American citizens, Canadians, and then of course Europe. Great, let's begin the show from Jazzy Island with Michael Simanji. It is a sunny but cool day in Jersey Island when we arrive at Hotel Ambassador. Known for its breathtaking coastal views and world-class accommodation. But this is not why we are here. You see, besides its impressive facilities, Hotel Ambassador is also home to not one, not two, but six Kenyan employees. Yes, from the kitchen to the restaurant, bar to even management, Kenyans are definitely not in short supply here. Quite unique, considering we're about 10,000 kilometers from Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Isaac Kiprono is the restaurant manager. We've got uh, Portuguese, we've got uh, Polish, Romanian, and also Kenyans. In my department, I've got uh, two Kenyans permanent here, two waitresses. When we are busy, we do contract part-timers from the other hotels and we do get as many as we wish, depending on how busy we are. Sometimes I could have here in the restaurant up to 10 Kenyans. This is Isaac's 19th year on the island. But what exactly lured him here? In the year 2000, there was the first patch of Kenyans came to this island through Utali College. It was about eight of them. Then 2001, another 30 came. By the time it was 2003, 2004, there were about 400 Kenyans on the island. A friend came over and then I came to know about it. It was easy at that time in such a way that if you could get a job, then your employer just uh, applies for your permit. Then you send your permit, you process your visa, and, and there you are, you, you are here. Yes. It was that simple. What followed was relocation to Jersey, the largest of the Channel Islands, a group of British Crown Dependency Islands located about 260 kilometers from London. This was back in July of 2003. How Jersey works is like this. There is a government regulation here, which is they offer permits. It's a nine-month permit. So you get a permit, you work, but then at the end of your nine months, you have to be out of the island for three months. So you have to go back home three months, then your employer processes your permit again, then you can come over, you start again. Isaac did however experience some challenges when it came to language. I found so many nationalities from Europe, Romanians, Bulgarians, Hungarians, Polish, Portuguese, name them. And uh, to some of us, those days you would think Anybody who is white speaks English. And so when we came here, we found ourselves even who were speaking better English than them. And it was a real language barrier. Isaac hails from Iten, in Kenya's El Geo Marakwet, the county of champions. He has assimilated to the culture here. 
He has risen through the ranks to the position he currently holds and seeing how profitable life here was, he decided to share his good fortune with others back in Kenya. One of these people is Helen Mwangi who got her opportunity when she met Isaac virtually through social media. Facebook pia inashika nishanga watu. Sasa siku moja tu nimeka hivi ile stress usiku jalala uko tu kwa phone. Umenuka bundle kama mwisho so umekopa hiyo umefuliza. Na no, mtu ananiuliza hai. Naambia hai. Nashinda usani nani. Sasa nikaenda ku block kitu kanaambia usi block. Nikamwambia poa. Akanambia Rita mbona sikujui? Nikamza unanijuaje? Atana umefanya kazi no fuck. Nikamwambia nilikuwa huko which year? Nikamwambia ah oh, akaniambia mimi naitwa Isaac. I was there this time this time. Ndio akaniuliza, "Sasa unafanya nini?" Nikamwambia, "Wewe ukiniona hivi, mimi sina mbele wala nyuma." Nikarudi kwa profile yake nikamuuliza, "Nani uko jazi? Jazi US?" Akacheka. Sasa unajua sasa tujui jazi, mimi niko na jazi US. Akacheka na mbia zi, akaniambia pana niko London. Nikamwambia kuna nikasema kafikini labda ni Konma, na labda ni wasa kuchokoza. Sasa tunajua tuna text na usiku watu wao wamelala sana niko peke yangu kwa giza niko na stress. So ndio akani explainia nikamwambia naweza pata job akaniambia saizi kuna dalili watu wanaanza kuchukua job ni kama inafunguka si venye kulikuwa but just cross your fingers everything will be okay trust you me one month mimi nikaomba Mungu na kufast one month kuisha hata kaniambia imagine imepitishwa so in 2019 Armed with over 20 years of experience working at top establishments such as the Norfolk, Intercontinental and Safari Park Hotel, the Nairobi native sees the opportunity without delay. Here, it's not like back home. Like they used to work in Norfolk. If it's uh, like a waitress, if I'm doing the morning shift, as in I get to work, I, work, I do breakfast, maybe lunch, by 3 o'clock I'm home. Here I do breakfast, then I'm given time to rest outside the country you paid according to hours you work and if there's nothing in between you just you have a whole break until evening mm -hmm. so it's like a two hours sh two two shifts in a day mm -hmm. which is comfortable for me if i do morning i have time for myself during the day vice versa so it depends people are the same but you know in back home in my country uh, people take you different here they just love you they are so sincere they just tell you on the phone you're so nice you know and you feel nice you feel home Sentiments that are echoed by another Kenyan staffer, 39-year-old Paul Wambua Mutunga from Kitui County. Paul has been a barman at Hotel Ambassador for about nine months. Jazz is a nice country with nice people, very, very nice people. So far, so good. Kijob, hakuna tofauti. Juu products, siko Kenya, most of them unapata siko kwa hapa. But financially... Kiangalia mfuko a big tofauti. Jersey Island has a population of about 120,000. It is estimated that over 1,000 Kenyan migrants are working on the island out of which about 500 are in the hospitality sector. Isaac says they are enjoying favorable working conditions. The tourism sector is vibrant. The island receives well over 500,000 visitors each year. Jazzy really is a small island, but the economy is doing very well. So the leading is banking. There's a lot of banking here. There's a lot of uh, people keep their wealth here. So banking is number one. So number two is uh, tourism. Then we've got agriculture. We really have a very good reputation here. When we came in, we really helped in the hospitality industry and uh, we've got a very good reputation for that. So, and we, all the time we will, we've been talking to one another that please let's maintain the reputation yeah, so that we don't spoil for the others. There are several hotels here in town. Every department is represented by a Kenyan from the receptionist all the way to the chef, to housekeeping, restaurant. Isaac adds that part of his success is due to the expertise of Kenyan institutions having himself studied food and beverage service and sale at Utali College. Professionally, I would want to say Kenyans are very good and the way things are done in Kenya, whether it's in a five-star hotel or you know one-star or two-star, Kenyans are quite professional. When we went to Tali, 
most of us, we didn't know much about what to do with uh, culinary, anything to do with food or beef fridge. We didn't have that basic thing about it. But we were really prepared. We got, we passed our exams and then we, we were quickly absorbed in the, the industry. Moreover, the close-knit nature of the Kenyan community also features heavily. We've got this phrase, really, that we say, uh, just in Indogo, as especially we Kenyans when we meet. Any other days, whenever somebody goes to town, it's a small town, uh, somebody stops by, sees a Kenyan, all of a sudden, uh, just a group, you can see people slowly, slowly forming into a group, and, you know, they share. Like Mali kwa apartment, tunaka, tunaitanga kanairo. <laughs> tunaitanga kanairo juu. Hiyo tuko watu wa Kenya waine, wale tunaisha hapo kila mtu na rumu yake, ba tunaita kanairo, unapata tuko kwa, kwa tunaenda kwa moja, tunapiga ma story na kiswa hile hapo muna. Tunafraia, tunasikia enyewe, ni kama tu tuko Kenya. We meet with them, we have fun, sometimes we go for drinks, we have dinner, tunaza pick up, tunaza make ugali, tukimisa, ma, tuende tunane na kitu, tunaka tupike kanyama. Kumbuke tu home alafu unajua pia una, una need watu wa kuongea uweze enda kuongea na watu uweze understand yeah. like sio kapata mkenya wili alafu unaongea unaongea story ama kitu iko home mtu anakuambia afanye hivi na hivi at least uko na unajua uko na watu wenye huko na wezi kuachilia at the moment with the technology we've got a whatsapp group for all of us on the island so at least we keep in touch the gamble has clearly paid off for these three daring Kenyans here in Jersey Island. Their plans is to ultimately return home and enjoy their investments. But for now, their advice to those wishing to come here is don't be afraid to dream. It's worth it. Especially kukuja, ukikuja, mindset yako ikuwe ni kasi, umekuja kasi, na uwe ready kufanya kasi. Come here, observe the rules of this place, the laws of this land, be a, like a good kind of citizen here. And uh, you come and work hard and make sure you remember home in terms of what you hear. It's very easy here to spend your money here, leave your money here instead of doing something back at home. We are coming here to make money. Neo kidogo tatengeneza ndio inataki kana home. Just come with a positive mind. Thank you, Michael, for that story from Jersey Island. We now take a short break. When we return, our daring excursions in Zanzibar as Safari Link spreads its wings on the island. Looking for a home investment in a serene neighborhood, Sintam Real Estate presents Cascadia Apartments, located within the thriving Two Rivers development in Nairobi. At Cascadia, you are only a few minutes walk to our 40x cinema, retail shopping, coffee venues and restaurants. Your kids get to enjoy play areas at our theme parks, deposit 970,000 shillings, pay balance in flexible installments or mortgage financed. Talk to us today on 07 742-342-722. Welcome back. We are glad you are still with us. Let's now fly to Zanzibar with Safari Link. <laughs> Safari Link flies to Zanzibar daily during peak season. On this particular trip, we are all set to share our journey experience from Wilson Airport to the island. I'm accompanied by producer David Ndambuki and videographer Eric Maweu. Our travel coincides with the peak season and within just one and a half hours, we are in Zanzibar. We took a level of 21,000 feet above mean sea level. This is a tourist destination. We were able to see Mount Kilimanjaro. It's quite an adventurous route. There is quite a bit to see because uh, of the nature of uh, the route itself. There's a lot of features along the way. As we land, of course, now the view is also very nice because the airport is located just next to the Indian Ocean. 
Alex Chamoda, it was a pleasure flying you today. Thank you. You and your team from Charms team. Yeah, and thank okay. you for a smooth flight. Yeah, thank you very much. Asante. Asante sana. Fast forward, and no sooner had we landed than we were already enjoying the sights and sounds of Zanzibar Island, also known as Unguja. We are treated to this welcome by traditional dancers. Culture is one of Zanzibar's signature tourism products, the dance. Wow, some physical exercise of sorts. Our first and most exciting excursion is a visit to Matemwe Island. The island that is known for dolphin watching. And what a blend of the blue sky and blue ocean with lots and lots of speedboats carrying tourists making rounds. Well, within no minutes we spot dolphins. We are told that from the way they are behaving, they are in good mood today. We are also told here you can swim with the dolphins as they are friendly to human beings. Anyway, we may not have swam with the dolphins, but we had our own swimming moment. Quite refreshing. And we are done here. We are now in Josani Forest. Josani Forest is yet another key tourist attraction here in Zanzibar. We are in the middle of the forest and I'm told that the forest is about 50 square kilometers here. We expect to see mangroves. Uh, we expect to see a rare species of uh, monkey known as red colobus monkey and uh, also mahogany trees. Let's go. Yes, a trip to Zanzibar would be incomplete without a visit to Jozani Forest National Park. Tropical forest is covered by rain. Our tour guide is Hamis Faki. The forest covers 5,000 hectares of 50 square kilometers of land. It is the source of hardwood used for the popular Zanzibar doors, also used in the construction of boards and other furniture although the government is nowadays very strict on cutting trees in the forest. This forest is the home to the red colobus monkey, a rare species only found in Zanzibar. Here, we get up and close to the monkeys. The red colobus monkey is unique. They're living 20, 25 years. Every two years, one baby. Six months for pregnant, one year to care about mama and baby to care about the male. So still they're living by group family. This is one group. Our next stop, the mangrove forest. We learn that in Zanzibar, Local communities rely on mangroves to stabilize the shorelines, protect the land and people from natural disasters, and to provide habitats for marine life. The mangrove for construction, for yeah. building, for the bridge like this, because mm. very strong. It's hardwood. Eh? Yeah, hardwood. Mm. Mm. We're using for the best way for tsunami yes, and erosion. Mm. So this is the best way to control for the water to come onto the village. Mm. So to prevent, very, very to prevent important. water coming yeah. to the village. Okay. Yes. Yes. Then Marijani Beach Resort, right on the beach one of my favorite destinations here in zanzibar we were here 
in January this year and we've made a repeat visit thanks to the Safari Link trip. So much to explore while staying at Marijani Beach Resort, which is now one year old. It was opened in December 2021. We are a, a full service resort, so we have uh, bedrooms, a selection of bedrooms. We've got the uh, chairman's suite, we have executive rooms, standard rooms, we have twin rooms. We also have uh, paraplegic rooms, accessible rooms if people are um, needing some specific treatment or attention, we are able to provide that. We have a, a spa, uh, we have three treatment rooms, couples treatment rooms, we have some hydrotherapy options in the spa, uh, restaurant, bar, uh, restaurant courtyard. The good thing about our cuisine, what is unique about it, it's, uh, it's a fusion cuisine. We do a lot of fusion uh, cuisine that is fusion of Western, Asian, but also primarily using the ingredients of Zanzibar. And Zanzibar being uh, very well known as a spice island, we try to incorporate a lot of those spices into other cuisines. So we use the same spices incorporated within the Asian and European and international cuisine. Stone Town, yet another key center of tourist attractions in Zanzibar, also known as Mujimkongwe, is the main city of Zanzibar. Streets are busy. Restaurants too, with both local and international tourists grabbing a taste of Swahili cuisine. The history of slave trade is among the attractions that bring tourists to Stone Town. Remember, Zanzibar was the biggest slave market in East Africa. Then, the prison island. It was used for confining rebellious slaves. And I will not hang up until I talk about the spice farm, yet another tourist attraction. You see, this is the pepper plant. Now I'm in the acacia tree or acacia. Yes, Zanzibar is one of the largest producers of spices in the world. Many varieties of spices. Indeed, with the effort to market East Africa as one destination, Safari Link's entry into Zanzibar makes a perfect timing. Zanzibar, by the way, is extremely popular uh, around the world. And I think it just starts with the name. It sounds very exotic. Uh, everyone, very mystical. Everyone wants to go to Zanzibar. So if you look at the key source markets, Zanzibar is really uh, up there. We are primarily a safari airline. So we have people typically book what they call a, a bush and then a beach safari. Uh, once they're done with a bush safari, uh, they want to do an R&R, &R, uh, rest and recreation, and typically that's when they want to go to the beach. So what we do is we offer uh, our clients uh, alternatives. We start off with Lamu, because we fly to Lamu daily, we fly to Malindi daily, we fly to Diani daily, and then we also offer uh, Zanzibar. Our biggest source market for tourism still remains the U.S. So you'll find that uh, we have a lot of, basically in North America, so we have a lot of uh, American citizens, Canadians, and then of course Europe. Um, so our traditional source markets, that's really the UK, Germany, Spain. Also uh, the Far East is also coming up. Uh, Dubai, and then of course India, uh, China, but of course they've had uh, an extended lockdown. But I'm also very happy to say that uh, increasingly, and especially this year, we're seeing a lot of Kenyans uh, also coming um, to enjoy our facilities. Wow, what a memorable stay in Zanzibar. And remember, it's just one and a half hour flight between Wilson Airport and Zanzibar. And there are efforts to market East Africa as one destination. That's how we end our show today. I believe you are already in the holiday mood. 
And on behalf of Charms Media and our broadcasting partner NTV, many thanks for watching and enjoy your Christmas.